Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming so far and making such a sacrifice. And I promise you that this will be a good time together. I will uh, I'll make this worth your while. Uh, we are living in a very interesting economic time today, perhaps the most difficult and challenging economic time of our history. And uh, this has uh, always been a challenge for us as salespeople is to sell against entrenched competition. So I'm going to give you some ideas today that I have shared with many people that have enabled them to double and triple their income. How many people here would like to double their income? If I can show you how, will you give it a try? Say yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I will give you several ideas that other people have used to double their income uh, as we go along. In your life, you must always predict growth. You must always predict that things are going to grow. And you must always work as though things are going to grow. Because it is your attitude more than anything else that will determine your level of success. Even when the economy is going down, some people and some companies are doing well. Others are not because sometimes they believe, well, the economy is bad, so we have to cut back and we have to reduce our activities. And others simply respond by becoming more busy and more aggressive. And that's very important for you and I. Well, uh, many years ago when I started off, I did not graduate from high school and I could only get laboring jobs. And my first laboring job was washing dishes in the back of a small hotel. And over time, I worked in construction and I worked in factories and sawmills. I know a lot about sawmills. I worked uh, in, uh, far on farms and ranches and I worked uh, on a ship in the North Atlantic. Uh, when I was 23 years old, I was working on a farm and sleeping on the hay in the farmer's barn. At the end of the harvest, I was uneducated, I was unskilled, and I was once more unemployed. And when I was, could no longer find a laboring job, like you, <laughs> I got into sales. <laughs> <laughs> sales is the ultimate default job in our society. Nobody goes forward into sales as we fall back into sales when nothing else is working. It's like driving a car and backing up and hitting something. Whoomp! You get out to see what it is, and it, it's a sales job. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we say, well, I will give that a try and see what happens. And sometimes your friends say, when are you going to get a real job? Because some people don't believe that sales is a real job. However, um, the 80-20 rule applies. 20% of people who get into sales realize that this is a great opportunity, that if you sell really well, you can earn more than a doctor or a lawyer or even a, <laughs> a politician. Um, you, you can make a wonderful living in selling and you can fulfill all of your dreams. In the Western world, 5% of millionaires are salespeople who have sold all their lives for another company but they sold a lot, and they earned a lot, and they invested the money carefully. So it's possible for you to achieve all your dreams in this field if you become good in selling. So I got into sales, and the only job I could get was knocking on doors, cold calling, from door to door. And I had no training and no experience. The only thing I could think of was to work hard. At least it wasn't like working on a farm or working on a ship. It was clean work. So I was told that selling is not really selling a selling job, it's really a rejection job. And the more rejections you get, the more sales you'll make. This was the totality of my sales training. So I used to get up earlier and earlier each day so I could knock on more doors so I could reject, be rejected more often. And I began starting at six, seven or eight o'clock in the morning when people came to work and I would knock on doors all day and in the evenings, I would go out and knock on doors of homes and apartments. I would sometimes work 12 to 14 hours a day. I worked 30 days before I made my first sale. This is not a good way to live, I can tell you that. I was sleeping on the floor of a friend's apartment. I had one change of clothes. I would have to wash out my shirt in the sink at night. I had one tie which came off and clicked back on, and one pair of shoes which were too big for me. So when I walked, it was like walking with swim fins. And I had to lean forward so my shoes didn't fall off. If I ran, my shoes would fall off. Uh, so this was my start. 
And after about six months of knocking on doors and earning just enough to stay alive, I noticed that there was one man in my company who was earning 10 times as much as anyone else. And he wasn't even working very hard. He would start work at 9 or 9.30. He would go out, or a client would come into the office, or he would go out and visit a client. He would have lunch with another prospective customer. He would make sales in the afternoon, and he would quit at 4.30 or 5. And he went to beautiful restaurants, and he had nice vacations. He had a beautiful apartment, and he had a pocket full of money. And he was, had no financial problems, and he was selling the same product that I was selling out of the same office at the same price to the same people under the same conditions. So I did something about six months later. I did something that changed my life. I still recall this changed my life. In your lifetime, by the way, you have experiences. And it's usually an idea or a concept. Something happens, and your life goes in a different direction. And this was the transforming moment for me. I took a deep breath, and I went and I asked him, what are you doing differently from me? Why are you making so many sales? And he said, well, show me your sales presentation, and I'll critique it for you. I said, my what? He said, your sales presentation. I said, you show me yours, and I'll show you mine. <laughs> because I didn't have a sales presentation. I was doing what I call the blah, blah sell. I would find a prospect and go blah, 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 until they would start looking at their watch and looking away. And so they'd say, thank you very much for coming in. Let me think about it. Uh, call me back next year, maybe, uh, or leave me some information. And I would go from place to place and get the same response. He said, no, no, no. He said, there's a process, a logical process of selling. And the process has seven steps. And the first step is to prospect and to speak to the right people. Uh, the second is to build rapport and trust with those people. The third is to ask them questions and identify their needs accurately. The fourth step is to make a presentation and show them your product. The fifth step is to answer their objections. The sixth step is to close the sale, and the seventh step is to get resales and referrals. Now, he probably didn't tell me all that, but what he did give me was a very simple presentation, and instead of going out and talking, I went out and asked questions, and my sales went up. And I remember people treated me differently when I asked them questions as opposed to talking. And so I began to ask more and better questions. Then I began to read on sales, and I read everything I could find, and then I would listen to audio programs, and then I would actually start going to sales seminars. And I did two things which really had a profound effect on my career. Number one is when I heard a new thing, I would immediately try it out. I noticed that many other people heard the same things, but they took no action is they wouldn't take any action at all, whereas when I heard something new, I would run out and I would try it out quickly. Number two thing that I learned is that nothing works. Even the best ideas don't work. At least they don't work the first time. And sometimes they don't work the first five times or the first 10 times. So I made a resolution that if I heard a good idea, I would try it five or 10 times before I pass judgment. 10% of people think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. They think about what they want and how to get it. So I'm going to give you a simple word that you can use for the rest of your career, which will double your income. And the word is how. Say how. how. Okay. From now on, whenever you have a goal, the only question you ask is how. Whenever you have a problem to solve, the only question you ask is how. If you have an obstacle to overcome, the only question you ask is, how? Now, the wonderful thing about the word how is that it triggers ideas, and the ideas are all for actions that you can take immediately. And when you take those ideas, you start to get feedback, which enables you to correct your course and take even better steps to achieve your goals. So the average person, when they have a problem, complains and blames other people about the problem. Top people. When they have a problem or a goal, they simply say, how can I achieve this goal? And they try this, and they try that, and they try something else, but they never, it never occurs to them that they will not eventually be successful. So <clears throat> they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. But what we found is people in the top 10% in every field 
Think in terms of their hourly rate, how much I earn each hour. Now, this change in thinking changes your entire life. I know because I've taught this principle to thousands of people who literally transform their lives and their incomes almost overnight. If you think in terms of how much you earn in a week or a month, well, then you have a natural tendency to waste time during the day. Monday is a slow day. You're recovering from the weekend. Tuesday, you start to work. Wednesday, the week is almost over. Thursday, you start to slow down. And now it's Friday. Who gets anything done on Friday? We'll do it on Monday. And so people's ability to produce drops, drops, and drops. And since 80% of the population thinks like this, if you're not careful, you'll find you are surrounded by people who waste time. The biggest time wasters in the world are other people who want to waste your time. And the, waste, reason, the way that they waste your time is by talking. Talk, 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 talk. No work, just talk, 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 talk. Or play on the computer, or phone home, check the movies, go shopping, drink coffee, start late, leave early, long lunch hours. How am I doing so far? Does it make you uncomfortable? Say yes. Because it, gets, it starts to become a habit. Remember, human beings are always trying to do what is pleasurable and what is comfortable. And over time, they do more and more pleasurable things, which are talking to your friends and having coffee and going for lunch. And soon, the average person is not working at all. So when you start thinking in terms of your hourly rate, it transforms your life. And what we have found, and we talked about this this morning, is that in terms of your hourly rate, there are only three things that you do that account for 90% of your income. In every field, it's always the same. There's only three things. When you think of your hourly rate, you have to think of what we call the law of three. What are the three things that you do that pay you the highest hourly rate, that pay you the highest potential income? Well, Columbia University did a study some years ago, and they found that the average salesperson works only 90 minutes a day. The average salesperson spends all of their time warming up and resting, warming up. The average salesperson makes about two calls a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And in between, they're getting ready, and they're making excuses, and they're drinking coffee, and they're reading the paper, and they're checking their email, reading spam, and, and so on. But they only work 90 minutes a day. And they did that first study in 1928. They've upgraded the study year after year. The latest one was about 2008. Average salesperson still works 90 minutes a day. And so all sales incomes are diluted down to 90 minutes a day. So we find that there's only three things that you do that pay you your desired hourly rate. And they are prospecting, presenting, and closing the sale. Finding new people to talk to, talking to those new people, and getting them to take action. I was working for a large company at the beginning of this recession. And they said, we're bringing you in to our annual convention to talk to our 350 salespeople, national company. And I asked them a lot of questions, which I do. And one of the questions was, what are your feelings about business for the coming year? They say, our business will be down by about 30% this year because of the recession. I said, well, why don't you set a goal to increase your business by 30%? They said, no, no, that's not possible. Don't you read the newspapers? We are in advertising. Business is down, and business is going to be slow, and we are adjusting to that. I said, well, you know your salespeople only work 90 minutes a day. Why don't you just get them to work three hours a day, and you can increase your sales rather than decrease your sales? And he said, no, no, that's not true. Our salespeople are professionals. They have an average of 11 years of experience. These people have been in the business for a long time. He said, they couldn't possibly be working 90 minutes a day. They work all day long. I said, no, they only work 90 minutes a day. So this is not a good way to start a business relationship. <laughs> so he said, he said, I've never heard that number. I said, well, unfortunately, it's true. I said, I have a suggestion for you. Uh, at this seminar, why don't we hand out stopwatches to all the salespeople, and I'll explain this principle, and then we'll track their workday. So at the seminar, I introduced them to a stopwatch. It costs maybe five or 10 euros, and I 
got them to agree that for the next month, every salesperson, when they went in to see a prospect, they would click on the stopwatch, and when they went out, they'd click it off, and they'd just keep clicking it, and it would keep adding up. At the end of a day, they could see how many minutes they'd spent with customers. And at the end of a week, they could see how many minutes. And they said, great. So the seminar was very successful. And I also said one other thing to this group. I said, you know that 80 or 90% of your prospective customers have never heard of you. They do not know that you exist. They do not know that your product or service can help them. They have no idea. So you can never approach your entire product prospect market. So a month after the seminar, about five weeks, I got a letter from him. And it said, dear Brian, he said, I writing to thank you for your seminar. He said, I have to apologize. He said, the salespeople reported their numbers from the stopwatches at the end of 30 days. And we found that the average salesperson was spending 90 minutes and 42 seconds a day with customers. He said, they have all agreed to increase that to 180 minutes. He said, our sales are going up at a faster rate than ever before. This recession is not affecting us at all. A year later, he wrote back and he said their sales were up 30% over their best year in history because the salespeople started calling on people they had never called on. Natural tendencies to keep calling back on your old customers. They started calling on new prospects and spending more time doing it. Well, what I do is I call this FaceTime. I call it the critical measure of your success is how much time do you spend face-to-face -face with customers? And that's the key to the stopwatch idea, is if you can increase or double the amount of time you spend face-to-face -face with customers, my promise to you is you will double your income. You see, you cannot control where the sale is going to come from. You cannot control the sales result, but you can control one thing. You can control your sales activities. If you control your sales activities, you put yourself under what is called the law of probabilities. The law of probabilities says that by doubling the amount of time you spend face-to-face -face with customers, you double the probability that you will increase your income. And so you, can have, you have total control over your income. Just go and call on more people. Just spend more time face-to-face. -face. If somebody calls you in the office, they should never be able to find you in the office. Do you know why? Because there's no customers in the office. The customers are outside the office. I, uh, I have a good friend. His name is Frank Pacetta. And Frank Pacetta started off as a junior salesman with Xerox many years ago. And he was a very good salesman, and he wanted to be uh, a manager. And so he applied to be a manager. And they said, no, we have no positions available for sales management. He said, I will take any position at all because I want to teach my ideas to salespeople. And so finally they said, an opportunity has opened up in the Cleveland office, Cleveland, Ohio. It's the worst performing office of Xerox in the world. Of 2,000 offices, it is the lowest performing office in a major city. So if you will move, and he lived in California, nice place to live. If you will move to Cleveland, which is called, in English, it's called the mistake on the lake. Uh, <laughs> it's... It's an old industrial town on Lake uh, Superior. They call it the mistake on the lake. If you will move there, we will make you a manager. So he said, I'll do it. So he packed up his family, drove across country, and there was a notice that the new manager was going to be uh, in the office, and he wanted to hold a sales meeting at 8 o'clock Monday morning. So 8 o'clock Monday morning, he is there waiting, and one or two salespeople of 32 altogether came into the office, and then one or two more, and they're smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee, and by 8.30, the sales team was there, and you know, they've destroyed every sales manager they've ever had, and this was just what we call raw meat, because they were going to destroy him as well. So he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he said, thank you for being here. I am your new sales manager, and uh, I want to ask you a question. What is it that you don't see in this office? And so they looked around. Maybe he'd taken a painting off the wall or something. They said, we give up. He said, you don't see any customers. And you are salespeople, and your job is to be with customers. You have leads. Now go out and see customers. This sales meeting is over. Everyone out. 
out, out. And he herded them out like cattle, herded them out the door. I know, because a friend of mine who was in this office at that time told me that this story is perfectly true, and he wrote about it in his book. So they, they, were, they were all out, and they went out to the hallway, and they said, what do we do now? So, so, they're not used to spending much time with customers, so they said, well, let's go across the street and have some more coffee. And some of them said, well, I think since I'm already out, I'll go and call on customers. So the next day, they came back, and he had announced there would be a sales meeting every morning at 8 o'clock. The next morning, they came back. This time, they were a little bit more punctual. And they came in, and all the desks and chairs were gone. He'd had a moving company come the night before and move them all away. And so they were standing up. And he said, now, you notice there's no desks or chairs. Yeah, so we're going to have our sales meetings standing up. Over here, there's three offices which have locks on them with desks and chairs. So if any of you bring a customer in to talk to, you can sit in one of these offices. But since you won't be spending any time in the office anymore, you won't need a place to sit. And this sales meeting is now over, so out, go and call on customer. Well, this was his strategy. In the next 30 days of the 32 salespeople, 12 quit. They told him that he should go and multiply by himself. I don't know if we have that expression in Finnish. Some of you didn't get that, but some of you did. All right. Uh, and the others, the others, though, started to make more sales. And since they're highly commissioned, they started to make more and more sales, and they started to get really motivated by making sales. And then he began to have a sales training lesson every morning, and talk to people, and work with people, and go out with people, and come back in with people, and the sales went up. Within a year, within, within one year, it was in the top 500 offices in Xerox. Within two years, it was the number one office in Xerox. The salespeople in that office were earning more per person than any other office in Xerox worldwide. People who worked with him, who I have met, still talk about those being the great days. And the only strategy was forcing salespeople to go out and spend more time face-to-face -face with customers. And you can do that yourself. You can be your own sales manager and use the one infallible, totally controllable strategy in the world, spend more face time.